What can he know? What is going on, everybody? Nazdarachi coming back at you again today on this Monday evening for another video for Dragon Ball Legends. Uh, I apologize, I was super busy over the weekend, so I couldn't actually record a video. But yesterday, we did get the V-Jump scans for Lord Shield and for Super Saiyan Bardock. So we're going to go over that today. And it may be a good that we waited a little bit because I'll have the translations as well, so we get a rough idea of what's going on. Things are a little bit backwards from what I had originally assumed. I figured since the Lord Shield and Super Saiyan Bardock is a movie that they would be showing up on a Legends Rising banner where maybe Goku Black and Kale would be the featured highlights on the Ultra Space Time 7. But it does seem that Lord Shield and Bardock are coming on an Ultra Space Time number 7 banner which should be here soon within about a week, a week and a half or so. So we will go over that. I'll actually throw it up on the screen, an image of it. You've probably already been looking at it while I've been talking here for a little bit. And the main points that we want to go over on this are that we have here translations. The Frieza's ancestor, the terrible space pirate Shield, will soon make his way to Dragon Ball Legends. Goku's father has awakened. Super Saiyan Bardock makes his appearance. Both of these characters will be coming in the beginning of December with the Ultra Space Time number 7 banner. So this will not be a transformation of the current Bardock unit we have now. This will be a new unit to go along with Chilled. There probably will be a few other new units on the banner as well. But we don't know if they'll be Goku Black, Kale, or Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Maybe it would be nice if they threw Super Saiyan 3 Goku on there. That would kind of be cool. But the V-Jump scan itself doesn't really show all that. It actually kind of plays a heavy focus on Chilled. He takes up most of the page as you can see with some stuff about Bardock off to the side. So for Chilled, it says if his health is higher than his enemies, he will power up. He also reduces damage taken from Super Saiyans. His super attack is the Death Ball that deals explosive damage or explode damage. And his recommended party is the Frieza Force team that is built around the blue type. Now, originally I was thinking you would pull off the Sparking Captain Ginyu from Frieza Force team to fit him in. My current team for Frieza Force is both pod Frieza's, the first form Frieza in the space chair, um, the EX and the Sparking, the yellow Sparking Frieza, the green Ginyu, and then Dodoria and Zarbon. So we might have to find a new spot to squeeze him into this team here and uh, kick out somebody else. But the whole his health is higher than enemies, he will power up. I'm not sure if that's just for chilled himself or if it's a whole team based thing it's probably just for chilled himself but it'll be interesting hopefully he's good enough to make the frieza force a competitive meta especially what with final form frieza getting a buff now as well and we're gonna go over all the buffs for the characters in this video also and again hopefully we'll get through it relatively quick the last thing we're gonna talk about on the v-jump scan Super Saiyan Bardock he will power up fellow Saiyans and while fellow Super Saiyans remain not defeated Bardock's stats will be increased. He also has an added effect where he can lower the abilities of his enemies. His super attack is the Revolt Pile that deals explode damage, which if I'm not mistaken is the same as the EX Bardock's special move. So maybe it'll be the same animation, hopefully it'll be something a little newer and more flashy, but I guess we'll find out when the time comes. This is going to be a really good unit because Saiyans and Super Saiyans are obviously very strong in this game. They have very flexible options for team building. He will make a great addition along with Super Vegeta to your Super Saiyan teams where he'll play an active role or you can throw him on the bench on pretty much any Saiyan team it sounds like. Now in contrast to the Bardock we currently have who is more of an anchor character I believe, anyway, I don't have him, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that Bardock functions a little bit better currently as an anchor character. This Bardock seems to be more powered up while your teammates are still alive, so you can kind of be more flexible with him, and that could be pretty cool also. And honestly, since I don't have the regular Bardock, I would love to get this one. Chilled, I, I would like Chilled, I'm not actually a huge fan of his design, he's like a first form Frieza in like a leotard or a onesie like kind of like ballet or something is what he reminds me of so I know I was never a huge fan of Chilled's design and you never saw him really power up Super Saiyan Bardock just nukes him before that's really a thing so yeah not a huge fan of Chilled but the Frieza Force team probably make good use of him 
And yeah, that's about that, you guys. The uh, V Jump Scan, you can check it out yourself. Like I said it's been in the video probably for quite a bit now. And um, yeah, we're gonna fade that out and move on to the next point that we want to discuss here which is some balance changes and stuff happening in the game. So we're hopping back over to DBZ space here, courtesy of Renzi. He throws all this together in a really great format here, so why not? So the first thing that we want to cover today, which is a gameplay concept that I actually never really covered. It's the float step. And the only reason I don't really cover it is because I never really used it. I, I mastered it. I knew know what it's all about. But it, it's like a, a lot of people bring up a good point. I don't want to just be an echo chamber. Is that if the game doesn't have an extremely good latency, it doesn't work very well. Which is basically a technique where as you're attacking, as soon as you come out of the attack card, instead of dashing forward to do the traditional sidestep technique, you would just kind of roll your thumb forward on the screen and your character would do the, uh, not the dash forward, but the, just the step into the next plane on the fighting. You know how there's the close range, medium range, far. If you're in far, you'd roll your thumb forward, he would step to mid range. If you're mid, you'd roll your thumb forward and he would step to the close range. And basically this allowed for greater key regeneration and card. Basically it was kind of a way of hijacking back to the old sidestep. And, you know, all that huge description I just gave it is all, you know, pointless now because they've removed it from the game. They've basically added a delay when you roll your thumb forward to step into the next closeness to your enemy. They have added the delay to that, that animation. So now it's not viable. You can just teleport out of it if the enemy tries it on you. That in combination with the latency that's normally present in all games. Some games it's not super laggy. But there's always a little bit of latency, and with that added to this adjustment, there's no way the float step is going to be a viable technique anymore. Honestly, it's kind of why I didn't cover it, because I didn't really get into using it on the regular myself to win games because of the dependency on connection and the fact that something like this was bound to happen anyway. So, kind of gave you a brief description of what it was, but... Um, these are the character balance changes. So that was the first, if you go back to the DBZ space here, the main page, I believe that's the 1.2 update announcement here. Yeah, so that was this right here, which is the 1.20 update or 1.20. That is what they've changed as of last night. I had this update when I logged in today. So going back to what we were originally looking at now, but we were talking about something else. There are character balance changes. They basically have scanned all the character data of people playing PvP and analyzed the most underused characters and the ones that are just absolute trash. Not hero units, obviously the EX units and sparking units that are the most underused. And they have compiled a list of them here <coughs> that we're gonna go over, which basically shows changes that they've made to try and make them a little bit more viable. Mercenary Tau is the first one that they released. They're basically upgrading his Z ability to power up purple units, so he will be a, an acceptable bench character on a purple team, I guess. There's still no appeal for me to actually ever use Mercenary Tau, so we're not going to spend too much time on that one. This one is a little bit more interesting. They really want to make this card useful right here. They're going to make him more versatile, so I'm assuming they're gonna possibly make him a little bit more like Gotenks, where you only need to use two green cards to fully power up the super instead of three. I don't know exactly what they're planning, but they're also buffing his Z ability as the ace of purple teams. Right now, I believe he's mostly defensive, so maybe they'll add an offensive buff on there as well. But, I don't know, he's an okay character, he just, he takes a long time to play right now with having to use three green cards to get him fully, you know, equipped to use his blue card, and his stats are just, you know, kind of average, so that's why you really don't see him that much. Hopefully they make him a little bit more viable. I'd like to use him because his special animation is quite nice. Pycon here, watch out for his new unique ability that inflicts a tribute downgrades to all enemies when defeated. I still don't like that, the PyCon having to be defeated, it'll help Gogeta out with the increased key regeneration, but I don't want to bring a character to battle with the intention of him dying. I mean, I guess if you're going to throw him in front of the Rising Rush, so be it, but I still don't like like planning on a battle with me having to lose a character. I, I don't like that part of him. 
They are going to buff his Z ability to take a little bit better care of characters from the movies. So maybe he will make a return as a viable bench character on a movies team. That remains to be seen. With Chilled and Bardock coming out. It says Bardock is a Saiyan buffer. So it's pretty clear that he's probably not going to be a movies. And then with Chilled, he's going to be a Frieza Force buffer. Even though they're movies characters, maybe, I don't know, that's going to be a possible new meta that we're going to have to play with here, movies characters. Especially now that we're getting movies characters that don't buff the actual movies team. So, that's definitely interesting. Chatsu, oh god, do we really even care about Chatsu? I don't think so. It powers up his self-destruct even more. Upgraded Z ability at 5 star. I'm never running Chatsu, I don't care. And this Tien. This Tien has pissed me off quite a bit as well. Let's get a sparking Tien from the Cell Saga where he does, you know, uh, Ultimate Arts Technique Tri-Beam or something. Then I'll be excited for a Tien. But Yellow power up even more, so he's going to be better on a bench team for Yellow, you know, Yellow focused teams. Which he's already reasonably good for, but now, you know, hopefully it'll make him a little bit more offensive like they're saying now. Will Tien become an inevitable part of Yellow teams? Maybe, but probably not. We'll, we'll see. It remains to be seen. All the X units so far. Now, this one is one of the first more interesting ones here. You have the Sparking Captain Ginyu. Now, the reason I like that is because right now he buffs, I believe, just Ginyu Force units. But they're adding a Frieza Force tag to his Z ability. So, that makes him actually a more viable unit on the Frieza Force team where I actually use him right now. But with Chilled coming out... Maybe he will lose his spot. I don't know. It remains to be seen. They're making his body change more powerful and easier to use. So I guess right now it only works if you are one or two rows away from your enemy. Maybe they'll add the third row effectiveness in there, making it more easy to use. It's not very difficult to use right now. You just need to swipe forward before you use it. But for, I guess, newer players, that might be something that they never really get to see, possibly. I don't know. But the... Uh, Status buffs, body change getting buffed. Again, with the Frieza Force being added to his tag or his Z ability, that's potentially the most exciting thing about him there. This is the buff that I'm most excited about. The Telekinesis card for all of the Frieza units is already ridiculously overpowered if you know how to use it properly. It will stop a flat out Rising Rush if a character has activated Rising Rush and they're dashing towards you and you activate Telekinesis. Frieza just holds his hand up, and that's it. End of story. Rising Rush is canceled out. So this is a great card, and the fact that they are making it, I guess, work from the back row now as well, is going to make Frieza almost as good of an anti-Rising Rush character, maybe even better than IT Goku, where he can just teleport you out of the way. Because now, if you have a green card on hand, just swap to Frieza, green card, and cancel out the Rising Rush, and it automatically sets you up to be in a position to get a combo off. You get the, you know, you've, you've taken over neutral at that point and put it in your favor. So, that's, that's kind of a great resetting tool when, you know, things are about to potentially get bad for you. And it's just good offensive anyway. Most of the time you'll see people green card into the Ultimate Arts technique or green card into a quick swap to type advantage and then start a combo. So that's kind of what you're looking at now and it's just going to be more versatile. And his anti sans power, it looks like getting boosted there as well. He just didn't have a good Frieza Force team to back him up. But now maybe with this buff, with Chilled and with Ginyu having Frieza Force buffs as well, maybe we can actually have a strongly competitive Frieza Force meta. And that's honestly what I'm most excited for in this whole video. That and Super Saiyan Bardock, I guess. But, you know, what happened to Majin Vegeta and what happened to Super Saiyan 2 Goku, all right? Things are getting a little weird now and they're just kind of jumping all over the place. Especially the Ultra Space Time 7 being the two movie characters is really what threw me off. Like, usually those movie characters have been restricted to Legends Rising banners, which means that... We'll have tickets, hopefully, guaranteed sparking tickets for Super Saiyan Bardock and Chilled. Maybe after the fact that not a lot of people or not many people got the other Bardock, they, they decided to set it up this way, so more people got Bardock. Alright, <clears throat> speaking of the old green Bardock, we're getting a buff to Yamcha to make him more effective as a bench character on green teams here, and that's good. Yamcha is like the all-time favorite troll character of the series. So better Yamcha on your green team. And Kaba, 
he's not going to be good until we have Universe 6 or God of Destruction Champa era meta cards in the game. So the fact that they are boosting that when the team isn't even viable yet is maybe somewhat questionable. But I can understand why this card is on the bottom pool of used units because he has no team. Release Universe 6 characters and I almost guarantee this will change. And at least he'll be a bench unit because when people have Super Saiyan Kaba, why are they going to run the extreme non-Super Saiyan Kaba? They probably won't, but he'll still be a good bench character. But the main reason this unit's not used, Dimps, is because... He has no team. There's like literally no one from the Champa saga that he can pair with right now. He, he, Frost and, you know, Jocko are only other two super units. So nobody's going to make a team of just those three units, EX, and the three hero versions of them. What? No. Not going to happen. All right. Maybe a troll team. And then Cooler, his abilities have always been really good. He just didn't have a good team because he doesn't really fit into the Frieza Force. That was one of the main drawbacks. If Cooler was a Frieza Force unit and buffed Frieza Force with Frieza and with all the changes they're making, that would be amazing. He's still going to be a movies unit, but they're powering that up. With movies teams becoming more viable, maybe we'll see the return of Cooler on viability. But pretty much nobody uses him because, A, he only showed up on like one banner, I think. I don't think he's ever come back. Maybe he's come back once. But I don't think so. So A, he's really rare, and B, even though he's rare, he's not very good. Like his abilities are great. His green card, great. His main ability is amazing. His blue card is even pretty good as well. But his he just he has no synergy, and his stats really aren't super amazing. So hopefully the return of Cooler comes. And that's pretty much it for that, you guys. We've covered the character balance changes. We've covered float steps removal, even though I never really covered float step in the first place. I just, I didn't really like the technique that much, mostly because of latency issues. But that's about it. We uh, hopefully will be seeing the new Ultra Space Time Summon 7 banner coming soon here. You got the new Emperor of Frieza hard mode, just another recycled event. So if you look on Reddit and Facebook, you'll see a lot of people kind of, you know, complaining that the game is moving relatively slowly. I still have faith that big things are coming. Remember, Dimps is the company that made Xenoverse and Budokai series, so they are well versed in making these types of fighting games. Now, just kind of building the roster is what we're waiting for, and we can't rush amazing game modes if we don't have any characters to use them for. So, hopefully we have a little bit of faith that it's not just a game we throw money at and just we're very, very highly repetitive. It is kind of that way right now, but if I want to become a daily content creator on YouTube, I think I'll have to pick up a game in addition to this one until this game has you know more content to it but hopefully you guys are having good fun and good luck on any polls and pvp you guys are doing of course let me know down in the comments everything that you have going on in the game legends let me know how your polls have been how are you doing on your pvp grind if you enjoyed the video consider giving me a thumbs up definitely helps me out supremely appreciate all the support you guys have given me Hopefully you guys won't be disappointed if I make some other content for some other games as well. But the video is about to hit 20 minutes. I don't want to keep you all too long. If you're new here, consider subscribing, hitting the bell. I'd love to see you again on future videos. If you have any news about Legends that I maybe forgot to mention, throw that in the comments also. And uh, we'll see you on the next video, you guys. Have a good one, and uh, peace out, y'all. God damn it. I want Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Ah.